Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to show you how to sharpen an image in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Kelvin Designs. My name is Kelvin and I design, and that's why it's called Kelvin Designs. Click right here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get all these episodes as they come out. And click down here to get the source files to this episode and every other tutorial that I do for free. In this episode I'm going to show you how to sharpen an image in Photoshop. There's a bunch of different ways using different tools, different filters, and why should you use some over others, and sometimes should you mix them. I'm going to go over uh, a, a few different images and show you different techniques for different problems, how to salvage a blurry photo, or how to accentuate uh, some detail that you want to focus attention to. So, let me show you. Alright, so once you've downloaded the uh, files to follow along on this tutorial, you'll get this folder here, and let's uh, open up this first one in Photoshop. I'm in the Essentials uh, workspace. If you don't, if it doesn't look like this, click on Essentials down here, and you can also reset Essentials, uh, which will make it uh, come back to this in case you've changed it. And you might note that I'm in Application Frame just to hide everything in the background. That's over here in the Window menu, Application Frame. All right. So uh, you can see I'm at 16% down here. That means I'm zoomed out. So I'm going to hit Command Plus a couple times. Here we go. 100 and a PC that's Control Plus. All right, so uh, the first uh, sharpening method I'm going to show you is unsharp masking, which is probably the most common. Uh, to do this, let's uh, go ahead and make a copy of this layer by dragging it to the new uh, icon, new layer icon, and then right-clicking over here and convert to smart object. This is so that we don't do anything destructive. Okay, uh, we're going to go down to filter, sharpen, and unsharp mask. All right. I usually start uh, at 100 and let's say 0.3. This is my starting point on Unsharp Mask. And you can see before and after. It's very, very minor. You probably can't see anything in the video. And uh, uh, this is where I like to start. There's already quite a bit of detail in this photo. So let's go maybe up to <coughs> something like 130. And let's bring this up to 0.8, something like that, before after. Now, I'm getting I'm getting quite a bit of uh, detail. Holding down the space bar can, gives you the uh, hand tool so I can move around and look around. Before, after. You don't want to overdo it. In this case, there's so much detail and it's not getting too... Uh, it's not getting too distracting. It's a little bit, but it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Alright, so um, the radius is what gives you uh, the thickness of the sharpness on the edges between colors. So if I bring this up, you'll see that it almost gives you a glowing effect or a really bad HDR type of look. Um, you don't want that unless you're trying to do some illustrative sort of uh, look, which is not really what we're covering here. But so uh, you want to keep that radius really small. And the higher resolution you have, um, um, the thinner you can go because you'll have very thin lines determining the detail. All right. Now the intensity or the amount up here is how much you want to sharpen. Okay. So how distinct those little lines are going to be. Okay. I usually like to be between 100 and 150, 60, or something like that. Um, again, you wanna you w you don't want to overdo sharpening. It's overly done everywhere, and it's uh, not necessarily very pleasant. Okay, and the threshold, I keep at zero. All right, so uh, let's do 130.8. That's pretty good for this image. See before and after. Okay. Now, as you can see, because I converted it to a smart object, it's down here, and if I say, oh, you know what, it's a little too sharp, double-click into here, and I can turn it down to 120 or 0.7. Hit OK, and we're good. That was a non-destructive way of doing that. All right, so that's the uh, unsharp masking, the probably the simplest, uh, easiest way of sharpening an image, okay? All right, so uh, to get to our next image, let's just go to the Finder and open up the second one here. Whoops, over here. All right, so this is kind of an urban landscape. Let's zoom in to 100% again. Um, I recommend doing all sharpening at 100% or more, but 100% is really good. All right, so this is kind of an urban landscape. Um, which is uh, where I use the uh, sharpening that is available with Camera Raw. Now, please note that this technique is only available with Photoshop CC. Uh, anything prior to that will not work this way. 
uh, if you do not have Photoshop CC, you can just skip to the next uh, sharpening method. All right, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer and then right click it and convert to smart object. Okay, and we're gonna go to filter, camera raw filter up here, okay? All right, and once again, let's zoom in, get a better look at what we're doing. I wanna see uh, some of these bricks, some of these bricks here. Okay, a couple of things. First off, you got in this third panel here, you have sharpening or the detail, you have sharpening and noise reduction. Um, once again, it's kind of like the unsharp masking. The amount here is the intensity and the radius down here is how fat those lines are, okay? Um, I like to keep this, once again, very low on the radius and a little higher on the amount. And uh, you can keep the detail there. Now, you can see that uh, we've gotten, you're gonna hold on the uh, space bar to move around. We're getting a lot of grain coming out here, okay? Um, pretty strong. We can actually uh, click over here on this little uh, cycles between before after views here. So we can get a, a a sense of how it was and where we're and where we're at now. All right, so let's try to turn down the radius a little bit, turn it up to see what it does. You see, it gives you that kind of a HDR look, which you don't really want. All right, let's turn down the sharpening. We just want a little bit. Um, it's kind of nice in bricks, something like that. Okay. Now there's another thing. Uh, imagine I, I sharpen it up here. You see this in the sky here. You get a bunch of noise. So you got masking, all right? And the masking is basically going to make it so it doesn't sharpen everywhere. If you hold down the Alt or Option key while you hold down the uh, masking, everything that's black over there means it won't get the sharpening, okay? So there you go. Now, the sharpening is still on the bricks, but not in the clouds, which is nice. So you don't have all that, all that noise and all the uh, artifacts showing up in the clouds. You can bring that up a little bit more. Okay. All your shadows are protected and all your highlights are protected, which is nice. Okay, um, and you can see that we've sharpened maybe a little too much. I would, I would still tone this down. Um, and let's take a look down here at the buildings. So before, after. Okay, there's another thing. So I would, I would still tone this. I, th I still feel like this is a little too strong and um, it's pretty sharp to begin with. But we, we, get a little, uh, we get a little more sharpening, so that's pretty good. All right, another thing you can do. And uh, it's not really uh, sharpening per se, but it gives you a, a, a feel of sharpening, which is clarity. Just increase the clarity a little bit. Okay, something like this. And it gives you that sense of uh, sharpening. Okay, hit okay. Now, before, after, okay? All right, we'll get into fine tuning uh, some of these uh, sharpening methods, but for now I want you to see this is a little, it's actually quite, quite a bit too strong. Um, but that is the camera raw method. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the finder and open up the third image. And in this image, let's go ahead and make a duplicate. Now for this tool, so I'm going to show you the sharpening tool. On this method, you, this is destructive. You cannot do a uh, smart object and go ahead and apply it on that because it will not work. This is destructive. And so you go here to the little, uh, looks like a, a, a drop, click on it and you get the sharpen tool. Okay. And um, so you have protect detail. I highly recommend you check that and sample all layers. Sample all layers means we're going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. And uh, by sampling, it means it's going to take everything that's, if you have a bunch of layers, it's going to put it all into this new layer and it's going to apply the sharpening to it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just reduce my uh, brush size just a little bit. My hardness down to 25. Okay. And I think we're pretty good. The strength is 30%, which is pretty strong, but um, it's pretty good. All right. So I'm just going to start brushing over here on the eyes and on the on all the little detail. Move around. Let's go get his ear up here up in his fur up here like this. Okay on his nose, on his mouth, those paws. I mean, there's a pretty, uh, there's a pretty uh, shallow depth of field here where this is very sharp and right behind his chin, it's blurry. So we already have a pretty shallow depth of field, um, which means that whatever is in focus is gonna become extremely in focus, like his eyes and his, his forehead here, a little bit of his ears, his paws, that looks like a piece of walnut. 
All right, something like this. Okay, maybe sharpen a little bit of his fur over here, even though it is a little blurry. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Before, after, before, after. It's pretty impressive what this tool can do. Um, it has been completely redone since the old days, and uh, the algorithms, uh, the, the, the method that it uses to create that sharpness is actually unlike any other. Um, I highly recommend this, especially for portraits, um, not just squirrels. So anyway, this looks uh, pretty nice. All right, so uh, let's go back to um, the Finder and open up the fourth image. All right, so I'm going to show you something, a method that uh, you probably may have seen before, and it's uh, using the high pass. Uh, to do that, the first thing you do is you duplicate this. Uh, your 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 layer, and let's go ahead and convert it to a smart object. Okay, and let's go ahead and name it uh, Blur. And let's go ahead and duplicate this one again, and let's call this one High Pass. Okay, High Pass being at the top, Blur in the middle, and your background back there. Let's uh, hide the High Pass for now. Go to Blur. And just simply go to the blur and Gaussian blur. And let's just do something like three pixels for now. Okay, it's pretty strong. Um, I did the uh, smart object so we can go back and say, oh, you know what, it's, it was a little too strong. Let's, let's uh, undo that. Okay, hit OK. And uh, now let's go to uh, high pass and filter and other and high pass right here. Let's keep it the same three pixels like we did the blur. Hit OK. And let's go over here in your uh, blending modes and put it on linear lights. OK. So you can see, let's just hide these. You can see before and after. Pretty, pretty remarkable, right? Before, after. Now we can actually uh, Select these two with the uh, shift and then uh, create a group by clicking a little group icon here. We can call this sharpening. Okay, now it's in a group, which means that if I create a uh, mask uh, like, like so on the group, um, we can go ahead and fill the, uh, here we go, fill with, let's fill it with black. Okay, that's the mask. Now it's hiding everything that's within that group. So if we take a, uh, a brush, B for brush, and let's just make this a little bit smaller, something like, that's, that's decent, okay? Now if I go in here using the uh, white, okay? I'm basically going to reveal in the mask. So I'm saying I wanna be sharp over here, I wanna be sharp over here, over here, over here maybe a little over here. So I'm, I'm really selecting where I want it. I'm not applying it everywhere. I don't need to sharpen this area in the background that's actually out of focus because that would just bring out more artifacts and grain and, and noise and so on, all right? So before and after, all right? So the nice, the nice uh, part about creating smart objects is if you're like, well, it's a little too sharp. Once again, let's zoom in 100%. There's too, it's just too sharp, it's too much. You can go in here, double click the high pass. Let's bring that down to two. Okay, that's better. Okay, and let's go to the Gaussian blur and bring this down to two. Okay, that actually sharpened it a little bit more. Let's try to uh, bring it to five, see what, how that looks. So it's giving a soft edge around here, almost like a diffused lighting. It's kind of interesting. Okay, uh, I'm gonna bring this down to, I'm gonna bring it back to three. I kind of liked it like that, okay? All right, zoom out. And uh, there you go. So that's that's the uh, high pass method. Okay. Now um, I'm gonna open up this next image, and I want to show you that you can actually mix all of these methods. And it's not like one method is better than another. It's depending on what you um, what your photos like. If um, if it's just a small area, if you have a lot of detail, and so on. So here we have a photo of this camera. Uh, very shallow depth of field. It looks like we have some chromatic aberration. If you zoom in here, you have some, yeah, you see that, that chromatic aberration. And usually using the uh, unsharp masking, that usually 
has a tendency to uh, really accentuate the chromatic aberrations. All right, one thing I recommend uh, when you have this is uh, using unsharp masking, but we're gonna go through another mode, all right? So what this means is you go to image, once you have a flattened image, you go mode, and instead of RGB, you go to lab, all right? Now, without getting into too much uh, detail of what everything is, once you click on your channels here, lab is comprised of lightness A and B. A and B is your color, and lightness is essentially all the detail. If I turn off A and B, it looks like a black and white image. And if I, if I turn off lightness, it's just a bunch of color, all right? Or lack of. So if I go to just my lightness channel, but I show all of them, I'm affecting just the lightness. And if I go to filter and sharpen and unsharp mask, I will be able to sharpen this image, right? Without affecting the color at all. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing, 100%. Granted, I'm, I'm bringing out a little too much noise in here, but you see, I'm not, th those, those, the chromatic aberrations that you see here, which can be fixed individually, but if I wasn't in the lightness, those red or magenta lines would actually present themselves even stronger, okay? So once you're done with this, it's a little too much, but I just, just, just to show you, let's, let's go back to a 120 and let's go down to 0.7, that's okay. All right, and then once once you're done with your sharpening, just go back into RGB, and there you go. Now you can go back and and uh, and manipulate your image as you wish. Uh, it's a nice, neat little trick. Going to uh, lab mode, just selecting the lightness channel, and then uh, manipulating that, and then coming back into RGB. Okay, and let's take another image over here. Okay, in this in this case. Um, we can do a number of, uh, we can actually kind of just mix uh, what we want to do. So let's start by zooming in. I'll move him over a little over this way. And I'm going to create a, a new layer. I'm going to go to the sharpening tool. Sample all layers, protect details, strength 30%. That's not bad. Let's zoom in a little more. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and sharpen him here and here, around his mouth, around his whiskers up here the ears okay and his fur not necessarily everywhere i want it to look like the parts that have strong detail something like this okay let's get some of that some of that fur as soon as you see detail it's really nice to have sharpness it kind of um accentuates that sharpness all right, so really, it's really his face and his eyes the most, okay? Now, instead of just leaving it like this, and uh, just to compare, we'll make, a, we'll make another one. I'm gonna duplicate that, okay? Hide that. I'm going to filter other high pass on the, uh, on the layer that I had, right? We'll do uh, two pixels, it's pretty strong, but just let's just try it out, and then change this to linear light, okay? So I have two I've mixed now two different sharpening methods. And granted, it's a little too sharp. See if we compare before, after. You see, this is this is just a sharpening brush, and this is sharpening brush plus the high pass. Okay, and we could, if we found it, it was a little too much. Well, you can always just turn down the opacity, like so, or you can go and and mask areas out. What I'm trying to show you is that not every method is exclusive. Uh, and it's just, uh, you can actually mix different parts, okay? So something like this. And let's take up another image over here, seven. And in this case, um, we we can mix different areas. Let's try, um, let's duplicate this. And um, I'm not going to make it a smart object because I want to use the sharpening tool. So um, I'm going to start off by using the sharpening tool. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, I don't want everywhere. Um, you know what, for this one, I'm not actually going to use the sharpening tool. I'm just going to go straight to Camera Raw. So convert to Smart Object, Filter, Camera Raw. All right, and let's go to the sharpening. Let's sharpen a little bit. I'll zoom in a little bit, Command Plus, and the space bar for the hand tool. Okay, and let's just get a comparison so we can see the before and after. 
I'm going to see uh, what it looks like. All right, so increase the amount a little bit. Not bad. Now, I don't want it in the sky there, so let's go to the masking. Hold on the Option key, and you see it really, all those flat areas kind of just go out. And it's just doing the more, um, the, the uh, lines, really. Okay, let's keep the radius around 1. Increase that a little bit. All right, it's not too bad. And once again, I know it's not really sharpening, but if I increase the, the uh, clarity just a little bit, it uh, it gives you that sense of uh, sharpness that's pretty nice. All right. And let's hit OK. All right. OK, now there's a very important thing. Um, let me just zoom in before I get into... Uh, all right, we have... It's decent. There's still quite a bit of noise. It was, it was already uh, blown up a little bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you, it's a little more complex, but very important, um, is you usually do not want to sharpen uh, highlights and shadows. And that's because those areas uh, usually will bring out artifacts and noise and grain. So what you want to do is make sure that your sharpening is isolated to uh, your midtones. So anything that's not purely dark or purely white. Okay. So to do that, you take the layer uh, that has the sharpening on it and you double click the area that has the, uh, the name. It'll bring you the layer style option. And here it says blend if, okay? Now, if the underlying layer is uh, black, now let's zoom in a little bit so we can see how this works, okay? Now, for example, in these darker areas, you'll see, you see how it's taking away all those dark areas? And now I don't have all that strange chromatic aberration and, and, and artifacting and, uh, and all, that, all that noise. And the same in the light areas, bring it up this way and you'll see at one point it stops right there you can see it there all right so like before after now it is very sudden meaning it's going from this to this in a very sudden way so to make it uh, gradual you hold on the alt key and you kind of bring this out here so you see now you have it's from here to here in a gradient it's saying everything that's white from this point on, it's not going to uh, apply, and everything that's black. So you do the same with the black. Hold on the Alt key, bring it out this way, and let's see, before, after, okay? So we're not sharpening the little noise that's in the black areas, which uh, we were before, okay? Something like this, maybe a little too strong, so we can bring it down just a, no just a notch, okay? All right, and... So that will be applied, uh, and if I add another filter, it'll still maintain the fact that it's not going to be applied on the dark areas, uh, very dark areas, and the very light areas. All right, let's take a look at our last image over here. Okay, this, um, so we see, we uh, once again, we have a shallow depth of field, um, but it's a, a little blurry. Uh, in this case, I would... Uh, once again, use the uh, sharpening tool. So, new new layer. Go to the sharpening tool. Make sure sample all layers is checked. Protect detail. 30% is pretty good. I'm going to need a much larger brush. Let's do let's do 1500 pixels. Hardness 20. Okay. And let's let's start off a little lighter, like 20%. Uh, okay. And I'm just going to click here. Click here. This is a pretty big image, as you can see. Um, something like this. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit to see what we're doing. All right. And bring it here. Let's see. Before, after. All right. I'm on 20%. So it's, it's very, it's doing it extremely progressively. Uh, light touches, which is nice. That way I don't, I don't accidentally over sharpen something. Okay. Keep doing that. Clicking, clicking. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's actually processing. So this algorithm is actually pretty intensive. So uh, don't worry if uh, your computer slows down a little bit as you're doing this, especially with very large images. Um, the process is very, very effective, but takes a little bit of uh, computer power. All right, so let's take a look before, after. So it's really in, those, in that little detail you don't want it to look like everything is super sharp, but look at that little detail before and after you have that. Now, once again, I actually want to, um, I want to make it, I'm going to uh, make this and use the high pass filter again. 
So filter, other, high pass. Let's keep this down to 1.5 pixels. And then normal and linear light. Look at that, before, after. So now I've really accentuated the fact that I'm blurry around here and sharp over the air. I could tone it down using the opacity over here. So let's say 70%, and that's better. Okay, and that uh, that covers every uh, method of sharpening. All right, guys, I hope you learned something in this episode. And if you did, uh, don't forget to like the video or share it on Facebook and Google+. It really helps me out, and I'll see you in the next episode.